Here are the tools that you're going to need to do the install. Uh, you can have a pair of channel locks, a half inch wrench, a 916 socket, a half inch socket, and a pair of snips. Uh, if you don't have a uh, little ratchet driver, then a uh, 916 wrench and a half inch wrench or a uh, equivalent socket will do the job. We want to remove the factory discharge chute. This takes a half inch wrench. I found it easier to remove this end first with the spring, set that up out of your way, then lift the flap, take this last bolt out, set the chute aside. Now we're going to install the no drill mount. Included should be the mount, two five sixteenths by one carriage bolts, two five sixteenths by one three eighths bolts, and uh, the nuts to go with them. When you install this mount, these holes go to the top. Carriage bolt goes from the inside. There's two existing holes on the deck that you will put these into. We'll use a half inch wrench to tighten these up. With the no drill mount installed, the next thing we're going to do is install the hinge plate itself. We're going to use our 3 8 carriage bolts for this. When you do this, make sure that you have the spring and the spring mount above this plate. This takes a 3 8 wrench. We run these down close, but don't tighten them up all the way until we get the flap positioned properly. With these bolts snugged up, then take your knee, press it against the hinge plate itself and hold it in tight against the face and then tighten them up. Now we're going to go ahead and position the spring mount. So the first thing we have to do is remove this nut and bolt. We're just going to, we're just going to start this on loosely. And we will finish tightening this when we install the cable. Now we're ready to go ahead and connect the cable to the spring mount. First thing we're going to do is pull this rubber boot off. We're going to spin jam nut number one all the way off. Jam nut number two is going to go about halfway. Slip the wire into the slot and put the fitting in place. And then put jam nut number one back on. You can finger tighten this, we'll be fine. Now, we're going to go ahead and tighten up this bolt that positions our spring mount now that we've got our cable laying here in the direction we want it. Now we're going to install the pedal onto the standard I. This is a 36 inch model, but uh, all sizes would be the same. We're going to mount the pedal over on the left hand side. Uh, this is a fairly small foot deck, and so it gives you more room for your feet. If you mount it over here on the left, use a, a couple of hex bolts up from the bottom. We run the bolts up from the bottom because this back one here is, is right against the frame of the foot band and it requires a hex bolt 
and then you'll put the uh, nut on top which has a, a flange on it for uh, use on the slot in the pedal. We'll go ahead and tighten up both both nuts. Now before we show you the connection to the pedal, we're going to show you the routing. On the 36, the cable runs around the right side of the deck itself. We'll come over here to the right side and then as we come up along the frame here there's a little zip tie we use to hold it in position here and it runs up between the outside frame of the mower and the motor platform itself back to the pedal itself. Next thing we want to do is go ahead and connect our cable and uh, the cable is roughly laid in place where we want it to go. First thing we have to do is go ahead and remove jam nut number one. So we're going to go ahead and spin that one off. And we also want to make sure that jam nut number two is mostly all the way back on the, on the threaded fitting. Um, our, our spring is going to be disconnected. So we'll take that off. now. We're going to lift this pedal up out of our way, put the wire in first, and then I usually just get the fitting started in a little bit so I can still reach in here and get the nut started. So you're going to want to get the nut started and, and put it on maybe a, a quarter inch or so, not too far on because the other thing that you have to do is you have to get this rubber boot and shove it back in place onto the uh, end of the cable. So it takes a pretty good push there, but you can get it seated back on. Okay, now once that's done, then we'll go ahead and spin the nut in the rest of the way. I'm gonna just snug it up for right now. We'll have to remember to come back and uh, tighten that up with a half inch wrench uh, in a moment. Okay, now. Next thing we need to do is we need to take our clevis. We're going to slip our clevis onto the end of the wire. Once it's in place, then we're going to go ahead and put our quarter inch pin in on this end. And get that clevis in place. I'm going to go ahead and hook this spring to get it out of my way. It goes into this little catch right here. We're going to put our cotter pin in. And wrap the cotter pin all the way around. Now we're going to go ahead and connect to the spring mount. So open loop goes to the top. It's going to connect here onto this uh, spring bolt. It's usually a pair of small pair of channel locks or something similar. I'm going to go ahead and pull. Hook this on. Spring should be all the way out to the edge of this bolt. And then if you notice when you open and close, the spring does rub the head of this bolt, which is uh, supposed to do that. And this allows the whole flap here to shift toward the back of the mower. We're ready then to install the cable itself to the mount. So we're going to take our remaining hardware. Should have left a little bronze bushing, 3 16 
pin and a cotter pin. So the 3 16 bushing slips into this hole. The clevis itself goes over that uh, bushing. And then when you install this 3 16 pin, you want to make sure the head of the 3 16 pin is on the same side as the spring. So using your left hand, insert the pin in through the bronze bushing. Position your cotter pin. You want to go ahead and bend your cotter pin all the way over. Once you have the cable connected on the flap end, then you want to go ahead and snug the jam nuts on the uh, cable fitting itself. You don't have to over tighten these and go ahead and make sure that the rubber boot is back in place where it belongs. And then do the same procedure over on the pedal end. Snug the jam nuts and to verify the boot is in place. Here we have a Wright Standard ZK 52 inch with a grass flap installed on it. Push and release to close it. Push and release to open it, or I can close it and then feather it anywhere I want by holding my foot on the pedal. Great thing is you can control the lawnmower and drive while operating the grass flap.